do the New York Rangers have the best rebuilding team moving forward in the NHL? And is Kapokako that true gem of the team? Let's talk about it next. Welcome back to Hockey Scouting Report. So glad you're here. So glad you're watching. What an interesting dynamic the New York Rangers have built. Whether it's been drafting just a few years ago, Philip Heath, Elias Anderson, but now adding in Kropstov, Kapo, Kako, and so many others, how is this team moving forward as a rebuild team? Of course, also signing Artemi Panarin long term. What do their future lines look like? What have their recent first round picks looked like in terms of was it a good selection? And then who would they potentially want to trade moving forward? What could those 2020 draft targets be? Let's get right into that. But first, if you're new to the channel, feel free to check out all my content. Recently just did a Minnesota Wild deep dive look at a very similar type of rebuild. We're also going to be doing the Ottawa Senators video. should be coming out soon, right after this one is published. Also, feel free to check out my podcast. Going to have a very interesting podcast episode coming out soon about the Avalanche Blue Line. I'll link that in the comments below. Lastly, of course, subscribe for more content. Hit that thumbs up and check out my Twitter. So let's get right into it. So the Rangers, over the past just few years, looking from 2017 to 2019, they've had six first-round selections. That's some of the most in the NHL over that time period. 2017, we saw 21st overall Philip Heatel looking to be a good selection, someone that can be a center, can be a winger, definitely someone who has great playmaking abilities, also very underrated goal scoring, and what makes it the most interesting is his age, being one of the youngest players in the 2017 NHL entry draft, now in his third season, really able to transition, had that AHL year, did very well there, had an NHL season that was slightly rocky on the rookie side, really going to step up and be potentially a top six player this year. Leos Anderson, seventh overall, a lot of people are comparing him to players that normally go that high, and certainly it was a reach. And so when you compare Leos Anderson to players like Casey Middlestead, who went at eighth, Martin Nichas, who went just a few picks later to the Hurricanes, and then Owen Tippett, who went at 10th to the Panthers. When we compare these players, it really is a tough one for Leash Anderson. Someone who, if he was a mid to late first round selection, somewhere like 21st where Philip Hito went, Hito was considered an early grab, can't always win on those, but Leash Anderson would have made more sense there. The fact that he went 7th overall, of course, Michael Rasmussen also going very soon after to the Red Wings, this is a player that a lot of people are uh, believing at that time could have been their number one center moving forward. Now the question is, can he even be a top nine center? Certainly the leadership is there, the work ethic is there, but the questions come down, can he transition that skating? Can he play at a fast level? And can he put those points up? That's been the biggest issue so far. AHO, we haven't seen it. NHO, we haven't seen it. Has to really put those points up. Filipito looking much better. And so... In that mindset, Casey Middlestat would have been the better pick for sure. I was very shocked when he went in front of Middlestat. Same with Gabriel Velarde. Now, of course, Velarde now having those injury issues may not play at this level of hockey ever. But at that time, Velarde and Middlestat were viewed as the third and fourth best centers of the draft almost universally. And so to have Leos Anderson go in front of both of them was quite the shock. Definitely the Rangers moving forward would do very well if they had Casey Middlestat. Yes, had some struggles in Buffalo, but could really step in as that number two center behind someone like Mika Zibanejad. Someone like Owen Tippett could add another sniping power to the team. But of course, having Kako Kravstov in the next two drafts after that, they really made up for that. Martin Nichas would add in great speed, something that the team might want down the middle when there is questions with Leos Anderson. Can he long-term continue that speed? And then Brett Howden looks very good in the physical two-way sense, but is that speed there? And so potentially 2017 was a bit of a mistake on Leos Anderson, very much so though a steal on Philip Heatel. Last year, I think the hype was died down on Heatel. A lot more hype was moving into it, but certainly a good pick overall. Long term, I have Heathel slotted in as that number two left wing talent. I don't see him staying at the center spot. Well, he could. I think the Rangers really need to work on that left wing spot. Really, all they have is Ryan Strom, Brennan Lemieux, and then Philip Heathel if he shifts there. I think Lemieux could be a trade target. I think Strom for sure is. 19 goals last season. Strom is really proving that he can be a lethal goal scorer. I think the past couple years, really, Ryan Strom has been in tough situations, being put to be that third line center in Edmonton wasn't a good fit. This is someone that really can be a goal scorer on a second, third line 
a group. And I think if he plays with a good center, certainly a lot of play can come from him. Playing with someone like Brett Howden this coming season may or may not be what he needs. I don't think Howden has that offensive caliber that Strom needs. And so I think Strom is going to be a trade target. He is a 2020 RFA. I don't see him re-signing with the Rangers. No knock on Strom's game. Like I said, 19 goals, something that the Rangers could use. But when we're adding in goal scores to this team left and right anyways... I think realistically, most Ranger fans would agree that Ryan Storm is going to be used as a trade target to add in a bigger piece, most likely something down the middle, potentially packaging him with someone like Libor Hajek, maybe even Adam Fox. I don't see it being Fox, but given that Hajek and I believe Lilgren are going to be expansion eligible, especially Hajek, you don't want to lose that level of talent. And while we're talking two years out, uh, 2021 expansion draft, never too early to think that way. Hajek Strom together in a package, throw in a pick. You could even throw in uh, Georgiev. I think Georgiev could be a trade target as you have Shostorkin. And then Lindbaum didn't look that great last year, but he was drafted high. Of course, you also have someone like Tyler Wall in the group. Potentially packaging those three, Hajek Strom, Georgiev, you could get a decent top six center. Of course, the team is going to be missing out on someone like Kevin Hayes, but you might really get a decent top six center. If you look at rebuilding teams across the board, maybe they would like to send you something. It's very possible. You could also even see something, if you look at the Minnesota Wild organization, they're having struggles with someone like Joel Erickson Eck in terms of that center spot. Wild also have been lacking in the goal scoring. Is it possible then Erickson Eck with Strom potentially add something else to that? Someone like Hajek, could that deal make sense? Yes, uh, Erickson Eck is struggling. Do you want another center that's struggling in the system? Or would he add that speed, that grit that the team needs? Now, in 2018, another very interesting draft for the Rangers. Three selections in the first round. Of course, Vitaly Kravtsov, ninth overall. What a steal of a pick. One of the top prospects in all of NHL. Long term, he's really going to be a number one, number two right wing for the Rangers. There is no doubt. Kapokako, the true gem of the team, 2019 second overall. Could have contended to go first. Of course, Jack Hughes went there. But Kapokako could really be an elite, kind of 30-goal, maybe 40-assist type player. I've seen some uh, projections saying he could be a 90-point player. I think it's a little too early to have such high expectations. But certainly a 30-goal, 70-point uh, season is not out of the question for Kapokako. Probably in a season or two, most likely that rookie year, we're talking 25 goals, 50 points or so. A little bit better than Svechnikov did as a rookie. Maybe similar to what Patrick Laine did. Now, when you combine Kapokako and Kravstov on the right, we are talking about what are the best duos long-term that we're going to see, Kako and Kravstov. And imagine a power play with those two. Imagine a power play that features Kravstov, Kako, someone like Zabanejad or Anderson, or add in someone like Strom on the back end, and then a defender, someone like Jacob Truba, Brady Shea. What a power play that could be. Even Anthony D'Angelo, what a power play. And so 2018 really was one of the best drafts the Rangers have had in years. They had no first-round picks from 2012 to 2017, as shocking as that is. 2012 to 28th overall was Brady Shea. He's still been with the team, one of the longest-tenured players. I think he's still going to be staying with the team for a while. But from 2012 to 2017, there were no first-round picks. 2018, like I said, Kravstov was the steal. 22nd overall, they traded up for Ke'Andre Miller. He's looking to be a very good player. Could be a top-line defender for them long-term. Currently, I have Ryan Miller penciled in a long-term on the second pair. I think Shea and Truba are going to remain on that top line. But if Brady Shea is traded or Miller plays even better than expected, he's going to be a number three, number four pair with someone like Anthony D'Angelo, who really is stepping into his own after phasing out in both Tampa as well as Arizona. Now, 28th overall is when it gets interesting. Niels Lundqvist, a decent pick. Lundqvist is someone that really is showing a lot of upside right now, both in the defensive end and that two-way role, but also offensively in terms of shifting forward. But when you take him at 28th, given that Rasmus Sandin went 29th and looks to be very strong with the AHO Toronto Marlies, and then also Joe Valeno left at 30th, the question becomes, was Niels Lundqvist worth it? I did a video very recently on the Rangers' full draft history, Feel free to check that one out. Not going to dive in too much on this one here. But really, Joe Valeno could have been the better pick. Imagine a future a line that had Valeno, Anderson, Howden, Heathel, Zabanejad, all being talked about down the middle. What a group. 
And so if we look at the future lines, what we're talking, that first line is going to be Panarin, Zibanejad, Kako. I think Zibanejad really isn't a first-line center, and I think a lot of Ranger fans like to say he's a first-line center. I think he's a very high-end second-line center. I think he's definitely a top 35 to 40 center in the entire league, maybe a little bit better. But I think if we're talking about a true playoff contending team, he's not a first-line center. I think a bottom 10 team like the Rangers, Zibanejad can definitely be a first-line center. No knock to his game, but most first-line centers are high-octane offensive players that can put up 70 to 80 points. This is not long-term what Zibanejad can stably do. It's just not something that is realistic for him. Putting him on that second line would certainly be much better for him. And so if the Rangers can manage to get lottery luck again this year and get someone like Quentin Byfield, someone even like Marco Rossi, what a selection that would be. Could be that number one center. They're still hoping that Leos Anderson could be that. I don't see it. But really that first line, like I said, Panarin, Zibanejad, and Kako, that's going to be one of the better lines in the NHL. Panarin, of course, has been fantastic being paired with the young center, Pierre-Luc Dubois, also with Cam Atkinson. And so a similar dynamic here, of course, much different players. Kako is certainly much bigger size than someone like Cam Atkinson. Zibanejad really doesn't compare to uh, Dubois in many ways, but Panarin is an elite playmaker and wants to play with goal scorers. Certainly has that in Kako. Also, Kako having that center ability, potentially Kako could shift to the center spot if that's what's needed for the team. Second line, Philip Heathel really has to step up and be that player. I have Leosh Anderson playing at the second line spot. I don't necessarily see him as a second line center, but I think in terms of what this team has, that's where you have to put him. You could put Philip Heathel at the center spot, but I don't think Leosh Anderson is a good left winger. I don't think he's a bad one, but I think if you had to shift one of them to the wing, Hito would do a better job at the wing than Leosh Anderson would, and the difference between them as centers is not enough that it warrants having a worse left winger. And if you also throw in Vitaly Kravstov on the right side, I think this could really be a nice dynamic, potentially work on it this year, having Hito, Anderson, Kravstov all working together. Most projections show that Kravstov's going to be working with someone like Howden or someone like Ryan Strom. Certainly could be a decent for them. Ryan Strom I have on the left wing. Well, he could be a decent center. Well, letting him work with someone like Howden, who really is not an offensive player, if if you can allow him to cover the defensive gaps that are happening in Strom's game that are keeping him exposed, allow Strom to add that offensive mindset, and then throw in someone who's speedy, like Bushnevich, who likes to run to that net, really get in front of it, chip those in, that could also be a dynamic pair. Bushnevich is someone that really has fallen out of the eyes of the Rangers organization for multiple years. Some projections are showing him to be the top line right winger this year. Don't see it. I think Kako Krops I really do slide up on that one very quickly. And so Bushnevich is a trade target for me. I don't see him staying in the system. I think Bushnevich can really thrive in an organization that wants to give him a top six chance every single game. And I think Bushnevich can bring in that number two center that the team desperately needs. The question is, what is that center? If you look at the Philadelphia Flyers system, they are truly log jammed on the center spot. You got Morgan Frost, you got German Rubstock, you got Pascal LeBurge, of course, Nolan Patrick. So many centers there. Of course, Couturier, Giroux, we could go on and on. Jay O'Brien, I actually did a podcast episode on the Flyers forward uh, um, prospects, mainly the forward um, in the center spot. Feel free to check that out. And then you also have Jesper Fast is going to be on that right wing side. 2020 UFA, don't see him staying with the team. And so really the trade targets for this roster, Leosh Anderson I think could be traded with other players, potentially Adam Fox, in order to get a better center. I think Lindgren and Hajek are not safe given the expansion draft. One of them will be moving. Adam Fox certainly fits into this nice defensive group that encompasses Brady Shea, Jacob Truba, Anthony D'Angelo, Keandre Miller, Niels Lundqvist. So why not have Adam Fox there? But is Adam Fox really worth being on that lower pairing? Will he shift up? The question is, what can he bring? And so I think when you look at Hajek, Fox, Lindgren, at least one of those has to move out, if not two, because they're too good to be in the position that they're at in terms of a bottom pairing role. They need to be shifted up. They need to get a package for them to get that center spot. Fast being the 2020 UFA, not going to be staying with the team. Georgiev 2020 RFA, as is Ryan Strom, I think we're going to be seeing some deals here. I think it really depends on how the Rangers preseason goes, but it depends on how the Rangers' first 10 to 20 games go. If they're looking to be a competitive team, they're not going to be making deals immediately, 
But if this is the team that looks to be, once again, one of the weaker teams, then I think Strom and Georgiev are going to be on their way out. Georgiev might stay. He has been a decent player, but it really depends on the development of Shostorkin. I think Shostorkin and Georgiev is not a bad goaltending tandem by any means, but if you can use him to get a better player, that's what you have to do. A lot of teams are going to want that goaltender. Now, if you look at 2020 draft targets, the team really needs to hit on a center. And so, yes, if you can draft someone like Quentin Byfield, what a selection. Even if you could get a winger like Alexander Holtz that might fix your left wing situation, having Panarin, Holtz can really slot in right after that with Philip Hietzel. But I think the best pick here is uh, Liam Foody's younger brother, Jean-Luc Foody. He has a good shot, underrated also has amazing speed. This is someone from the back end that sees the play form and great hockey IQ, able to run on the sides, dive to that net, and he's someone that really can be a dynamic 200-foot center. I don't think Foodie has top-line upside, but certainly has number two upside, and it would allow the expectations of someone like Leos Anderson to really be settled. Now, when you add in Kako and Krabstoff, two elite prospects that are being hyped as such, it allows Leos Anderson to get out of the spotlight. Same with uh, Philip Hietzel, and really, the franchise does not rest on either of them anymore. It rests really on Capo Kako and Vitaly Kravstov. And so, potentially, this could help Leosh Anderson do better, move forward, and be that top-line center. Don't see it. And so, I think adding in Leon Foodie makes the most sense. Comment below your thoughts. What do you think is the best trade possibility that the Rangers could make? Is it using Ryan Strom? Is it using Bushnevich? Comment below your thoughts on that one. Feel free to check out my other videos, and Ottawa Senators video is coming up very soon. Like and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.